My husband's betrayal shattered my trust twice. Now I'm rebuilding a life for myself and my daughter. I'm Emma, 28F, and I've been married to Jack, 30M, for five years. We met during our sophomore year of college when we were paired up for a group project in our economics class. At first, we didn't get along at all. Jack was always cracking jokes and seemed to never take anything seriously, while I was focused on getting good grades and building my resume. But as we worked together, we started to appreciate each other's qualities. Jack helped me loosen up and enjoy college life more, and I helped him focus on his studies. We started dating at the end of that semester, but our relationship was rocky for the first couple of years. We'd break up every few months over silly arguments or misunderstandings. Looking back, I think we were both just young and didn't know how to communicate properly. But each time we broke up, we'd end up getting back together within a few weeks, unable to stay apart. After graduation, we both got entry-level jobs in the same city. Jack worked in marketing and I started as a junior software developer. Living in the same city and not having the stress of college made our relationship much more stable. Um, we moved in together after a year, and two years later, Jack proposed during a weekend trip to the beach. Our wedding was small but beautiful. We got married in Jack's parents' backyard, surrounded by our closest friends and family. For the first few years of our marriage, everything was great. We both focused on our careers, traveled when we could, and enjoyed our time together. We talked about having kids someday, but it always seemed like a distant future plan. Then, about a year ago, I found out I was pregnant. It wasn't planned I had been on birth control, but I guess it failed. When I first saw the positive pregnancy test, I felt shocked and scared. Jack and I had just started talking about maybe trying for a baby in a year or two, but this felt too soon. Um, when I told Jack about the pregnancy, his reaction surprised me. He was thrilled. He immediately started talking about baby names and how we'd need to convert the guest room into a nursery. He even called his parents that night to share the news, despite my asking him to wait until we had time to process it ourselves. I, on the other hand, wasn't so sure. I had just been promoted to lead developer on a big project at work. It was a huge opportunity for me, and I was worried about how a baby would impact that. Plus, Jack and I had talked about traveling more before settling down with kids. We had plans to visit Japan next year, something we'd both always wanted to do. I tried to talk to Jack about my concerns, but he didn't seem to hear me. He'd say things like, don't worry, it'll all work out, or we'll figure it out together. Um, but I needed more than vague reassurances. I needed a concrete plan. As the weeks went by, Jack's excitement only grew. Um, he started buying baby clothes and toys, even though I had told him multiple times that I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep the pregnancy. It felt like he wasn't listening to me at all. One night, about two months into the pregnancy, I finally broke down. We were lying in bed and Jack was talking about paint colors for the nursery. I couldn't take it anymore. I told him that I was thinking about terminating the pregnancy. Jack's reaction was intense. Um, he got out of bed and started pacing the room. He accused me of being selfish and not considering his feelings. He said he couldn't believe I would even think about killing our baby. We had a huge fight that ended with Jack sleeping on the couch. The next morning, Jack left for work without saying goodbye. When I got home that evening, I found a note from him saying he needed some time to think and that he was going to stay with his brother for a few days. I felt terrible, but I also felt relieved to have some space to think. I spent the next few days researching my options and trying to figure out what I really wanted. I also called my older sister, Sarah, who had two kids of her own. She was supportive and listened without judgment, which I really appreciated. When Jack came back after four days, he was calmer. He said he had talked to his brother and realized that he had been pressuring me. He apologized and said he would support whatever decision I made, but I could see the disappointment in his eyes when he said it. After a lot of thought and discussion, we decided to keep the baby. Jack was overjoyed, and I tried to be happy too. But as my pregnancy progressed, I started feeling more and more resentful. Jack was so excited about every little thing, the first ultrasound, feeling the baby kick, while I just felt stressed and overwhelmed. I threw myself into work, often staying late at the office. My project was entering a critical phase, and I wanted to prove that I could handle it despite being pregnant. Jack started complaining that I wasn't taking care of myself or bonding with the baby. We started fighting more and more. Things came to a head when I was seven months pregnant. I had a big deadline at work and was pulling long hours. One night, I came home late to find Jack sitting at the kitchen table, looking upset. He told me that he had run into my coworker, Sarah, at the grocery store. Sarah had mentioned how impressed she was with how hard I was working, especially given my condition. Jack was furious. He accused me of prioritizing work over our baby and our marriage. He said he felt like I didn't even want this baby and that I was trying to pretend I wasn't pregnant. I snapped back, telling him that just because I was pregnant didn't mean I had to give up my entire identity. We had a massive fight that ended with Jack storming out of the house. He came back the next day, but things were tense between us. We barely spoke for the next few weeks. Um, I felt like I was living with a stranger. 
The Jack I had fallen in love with, the one who made me laugh and supported my dreams, seemed to have disappeared. Then, two weeks before my due date, I went into early labor. Jack rushed me to the hospital, and 18 hours later, our daughter, Emily, was born. Holding her for the first time, I felt a rush of love that I hadn't expected. Jack was crying tears of joy, and for a moment, it felt like everything might be okay. But once we got home, reality set in. I struggled with breastfeeding and postpartum depression. Jack tried to be supportive, but I could tell he was frustrated that I wasn't instantly in love with motherhood the way he was with fatherhood. He seemed to know instinctively how to calm Emily when she cried while I felt awkward and unsure. Things came to a head when Emily was three months old. I got an offer for a promotion at work, which would mean longer hours, but a significant pay increase. When I told Jack, he was furious. He said I was abandoning our family and that if I took the job, he would quit his job to be a stay-at-home dad. I was shocked. We had always talked about both of us working and sharing childcare responsibilities. In fact, before Emily was born, Jack had been talking about gunning for a promotion himself. I felt like Jack had completely changed since Emily was born, and I didn't know how to talk to him anymore. Now I'm sitting here with a four-month-old baby, a husband who feels like a stranger, and a career opportunity that could change my life. I don't know what to do. Am I the asshole for wanting to take this job? Should I prioritize my family over my career? I feel like no matter what I choose, I'm going to lose something important to me. I'm peace. I love Emily, and I love Jack, but I also love my work. I've worked hard to get where I am in my career, and this promotion could set me up for even bigger opportunities down the line. But I'm afraid if I take it, I'll lose my family. And if I don't take it, I'll resent Jack and Emily. I've tried talking to my friends about this, but most of them don't have kids and don't really understand. My sister Sarah has been supportive, but she chose to be a stay-at-home mom, so her is different. So my parents think I should prioritize my family, while Jack's parents have been oddly silent on a matter. I feel like I'm at a crossroads and I don't know which path to take. I want to be a good mother to Emily, a good wife to Jack, and a successful professional. But right now, it feels like those things are mutually exclusive. How do I choose? And how do I live with myself if I make the wrong choice? Update one three weeks later. Thank you all for your comments and advice on my original post. A lot has happened in the past few weeks, and I wanted to give you an update. After reading your comments, I realized that Jack and I needed to have a serious conversation about our expectations and goals. I had decided to take a day off work so we could talk without interruptions. I arranged for my sister Sarah to watch Emily for the day. So when I told Jack I wanted to talk, he seemed relieved. We sat down at the kitchen table, and I started by telling him how I felt that I loved him and Emily, but I also loved my work and didn't want to give up my career. I explained that the promotion was important to me not just for the money, but for my personal growth and satisfaction. To my surprise, Jack broke down crying. He confessed that he had been struggling with his own issues since Emily was born. He said he felt inadequate as a father and was terrified of messing up. He admitted that his insistence on me staying home was partly because he was scared of being alone with Emily. This revelation shocked me. Jack had always seemed so confident and excited about fatherhood. I had no idea he was dealing with these fears. As we talked more, Jack opened up about feeling overwhelmed and unsure of himself. Um, he said he had been putting on a brave face because he thought that's what a good father should do. We talked for hours, really listening to each other for the first time in months. Jack admitted that he had been wrong to pressure me about work and that he was proud of my accomplishments. I apologize for not being more understanding of his struggles. We decided that I would take the promotion, but we would hire a part-time nanny to help out. Jack agreed to talk to a therapist about his anxiety around parenting. We also made a plan to have regular check-ins to make sure we were both feeling supported. For a few days after our talk, things seemed better. We were communicating more, and there was less tension in the house. I started my new position at work, and Jack was making an effort to be more involved with Emily's care. I felt hopeful that we were on the right track. But then, about a week after our talk, something happened that threw everything into chaos again. I was at work late one night, finishing up a project for my new position. I got a call from Jack, who sounded panicked. He said Emily had a high fever, and he didn't know what to do. I told him to call the pediatrician and that I'd be home as soon as I could. When I got home, I found Jack pacing in the living room with a crying Emily. He hadn't called the pediatrician. He said he was too scared and didn't want to mess it up. I was furious. I took Emily, called the doctor myself, and we ended up having to take her to the emergency room. Emily was fine. It was just a typical baby fever, but I was shaken. Jack's inability to handle a basic parenting task had put our daughter at risk. When we got home from the hospital, I confronted him about it. Jack broke down again. He confessed that he had been having panic attacks when left alone with Emily. He said he had been too ashamed to tell me or to get help. 
I was stunned and hurt that he had been hiding this from me. The next day, I called in sick to work and told Jack we needed to figure this out. I suggested that maybe he should be the one to stay home with Emily, at least until he felt more confident. To my surprise, Jack agreed immediately. He said he had been wanting to suggest it but was afraid I would think less of him. So now we're in the process of completely flipping our plans. I'm going to take the promotion and be the primary breadwinner. Jack is going to be a stay-at-home dad with the support of a therapist in a parenting class. It's not what either of us expected, but it feels right. Jack seems relieved to have his struggles out in the open, and I'm excited about my new role at work. We're both a little nervous about the change, but we're committed to making it work. Uh, we've also decided to be more open with our families about what's going on. Jack told his parents about his anxiety and they've been surprisingly supportive. My sister Sarah has been great too, offering to help out whenever we need it. I know we still have a long way to go in rebuilding our communication and trust, but for the first time in months, I feel hopeful about our future as a family as a family, so we're both committed to making this new arrangement work and to supporting each other through the challenges. I've learned a lot through this experience. I've realized that it's okay to ask for help and that being a good parent doesn't mean having all the answers. Um, I've also learned that communication is key in any relationship and that it's important to really listen to each other's fears and concerns. As for my career, I'm excited about the opportunities ahead. My boss has been understanding about our family situation and has assured me that the company will support me in balancing my work and home life. I want to thank all of you again for your advice and support. It really helped me gain perspective on our situation and gave me the courage to have that difficult conversation with Jack. I'll keep you updated on how things go as we navigate this new chapter in our lives. Update two two months later, I want to thank everyone again for their support and advice. The past two months have been a roller coaster and I felt I owed you all another update. At first, our new arrangement seemed to be working well. I threw myself into my new role at work, and Jack seemed to be thriving as a stay-at-home dad. He was going to therapy regularly and taking parenting classes. He even started a blog about his experiences as a stay-at-home dad, which seemed to be helping him process his feelings and connect with other parents. Emily was doing great, too. She was growing fast and hitting all her milestones. Jack was much more confident and caring for her, and I loved seeing them bond. So when I'd come home from work, Jack would excitedly tell me about their day, the new sounds Emily was making, the games they played, the little adventures they had at the park. But about a month in, I started noticing some strange things. Jack was being very secretive with his phone. He would turn the screen away when I came into the room and was always texting someone. When I asked him about it, he said it was just other parents from his support group. I tried to brush off my suspicions, but they kept growing. Jack started going out more often, saying he was meeting up with other stay-at-home parents for playdates. But sometimes he would come home smelling like alcohol, which was odd for afternoon playdates. One night, I couldn't take it anymore. While Jack was in the shower, I looked at his phone. I looked at his phone. I know it was a breach of privacy, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. What I found made me feel sick. Jack had been talking to my best friend, Lisa. And it wasn't just friendly chat. They had been sexting and making plans to meet up while I was at work. There were messages going back several weeks, getting progressively more explicit. Lisa and I had been friends since high school. She was my maid of honor at our wedding. She was Emily's godmother. I couldn't believe she would do this to me. I confronted Jack as soon as he got out of the shower. At first, he tried to deny it, but when I showed him the messages, he broke down. He admitted that he and Lisa had been having an emotional affair for weeks. He swore they had never been physical, but I didn't know if I could believe him. Jack tried to explain. He said he had been feeling lonely and overwhelmed as a stay-at-home dad. Lisa had reached out to check on him, and things had escalated from there. He said he knew it was wrong, but hadn't known how to stop it. I was devastated. Not only had Jack betrayed me, but Lisa had too. I kicked Jack out of the house that night and told him to stay with his brother. I also called Lisa and told her our friendship was over. The next few weeks were incredibly difficult. I took some time off work to process everything and figure out what to do. Jack kept calling and texting, begging for another chance. So he said the affair was a mistake, that he had been feeling insecure and Lisa had made him feel wanted. I didn't know what to believe. Lisa tried to apologize too. She sent me long emails explaining how sorry she was, how it had been a moment of weakness. But I couldn't bring myself to respond. The betrayal was too fresh, too painful. I was torn. On one hand, Jack had betrayed my trust in the worst way possible. On the other hand, we had a daughter together, and I knew how much Jack had been struggling. I didn't want to break up our family if there was any chance of salvaging it. After a lot of thought, I decided to give Jack one last chance. I told him he could come home, but we would be sleeping in separate rooms. I also insisted that we start couples therapy immediately. It's been a month since Jack came home, 
We're in therapy twice a week, and Jack is continuing his individual therapy as well. He's cut off all contact with Lisa and has given me full access to his phone and social media. So he's also stepped up as a father, taking on even more responsibilities with Emily. So I'm still hurting, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to fully trust Jack again. But I'm trying to take it one day at a time, for the sake of our daughter. Jack seems genuinely remorseful and is working hard to rebuild our relationship. As for me, I'm focusing on being the best mother and employee I can be. My boss has been understanding about the situation and has allowed me some flexibility in my schedule. I've also started seeing a therapist on my own to work through my feelings about the affair and my struggles with motherhood. I've cut off all contact with Lisa. It hurts to lose my best friend, but I know I can't have her in my life anymore. Some of our mutual friends have reached out, and I've been honest about what happened. Most have been supportive, but it's awkward and painful. Jack and I are taking things slow. We're not being intimate, and I'm not sure when or if I'll be ready for that again. We're focusing on co-parenting Emily and trying to rebuild our friendship and trust. I don't know what the future holds for us, but I'm committed to giving it one last try. If it doesn't work out, at least I'll know I did everything I could to save our family. Thank you all again for your support and advice. It's been a difficult journey, but I'm hopeful that we can come out stronger on the other side. Update three six months later. It's been six months since my last update, and I felt it was time to share what's been happening. After discovering Jack's emotional affair with Lisa, we spent months in intensive couples therapy. We worked hard on rebuilding trust and improving our communication. Jack continued his individual therapy and parenting classes, and I started seeing a therapist on my own as well. For a while, things seemed to be improving. Jack was more attentive and supportive, both as a husband and a father. He was open about his feelings and struggles, and we were having honest conversations about our relationship. I was slowly starting to trust him again, though it was a difficult process. Emily was thriving. She started walking and saying her first words. Watching her grow and develop was a bright spot during this challenging time. Jack was an attentive father, and despite our issues, we were able to co-parent effectively. At work, I was excelling in my new role. The promotion had been challenging, but I was rising to meet those challenges. So my boss was pleased with my performance, and there was talk of further advancement in the future. So but about three months ago, something changed. I started noticing Jack becoming distant again. So he was spending more time on his phone and being vague about his whereabouts. My gut told me something was off, but I tried to ignore it, not wanting to believe that Jack could betray me again. Then, two weeks ago, I got an anonymous email. It contained screenshots of messages between Jack and several women from his parenting support group. So the messages were flirtatious and inappropriate, though not as explicit as the ones with Lisa had been. When I confronted Jack, he initially tried to downplay it, saying it was just harmless flirting. So but as I pressed him, the truth came out. He admitted that he had been seeking attention and validation from other women again. He swore he hadn't met up with any of them physically, but at this point, I didn't care. The trust was broken again. I realized then that no matter how much therapy we did, no matter how hard we tried, Jack wasn't going to change. He had a pattern of seeking validation outside our marriage whenever things got tough, and I couldn't live with that constant fear and suspicion. So I made the hardest decision of my life. I told Jack I wanted a divorce. He begged and pleaded, promising to change for real this time. But I knew in my heart that it was too late. The love and trust that had once been the foundation of our relationship were gone, replaced by hurt and resentment. I've spent the last two weeks meeting with a lawyer and making arrangements for our separation. We've agreed to a co-parenting schedule for Emily, and Jack will be moving out at the end of the month. We're trying to keep things amicable for Emily's sake, but it's been difficult. It's been incredibly hard, especially explaining to Emily why Daddy won't be living with us anymore. She's too young to really understand, but she can sense that something is wrong. We've been working with a child therapist to help us navigate this transition in the healthiest way possible for her. As for me, I'm focusing on healing and moving forward. My job has been a source of stability and fulfillment during this chaotic time, and I'm grateful for that. I've also reconnected with some old friends who have been incredibly supportive. Mum, my family has been a huge help. My sister Sarah has been coming over regularly to help with Emily, and my parents have been supportive both emotionally and practically. So it's reminded me of how important family support is during tough times. I've also started to rediscover myself outside of my roles as wife and mother. And mother, I've joined a book club and started taking a photography class. It's been refreshing to focus on my own interests and personal growth. Um, the road ahead won't be easy. Single parenthood is daunting, and I know there will be challenges. But for the first time in a long time, I feel hopeful about the future. I'm looking forward to creating a happy, stable life for Emily and myself. I've learned a lot through this experience. I've learned the importance of trusting my instincts and not ignoring red flags. I've learned that it's okay to prioritize my own happiness and well-being. And I've learned that I'm stronger than I ever knew.